Hello and welcome back to Suspended Fiction. I am your host, Dennis Betholkis, and this is Good Omens. Basically the entire season, the entire first season anyway, uh, review here. So it's no recap on this one. Uh, it's just going to be a review of the uh, whole season, you know, all six episodes, things like that. So if you haven't seen it by now, uh, yeah, it took me a little while to get through it too. Spoiler alert. Uh, there will be spoilers on this. If you haven't gone and seen it, go and see it. Come on back. This will be a video. You can comment down below in the comment section. Thank you, Viking Bitch, for that paddle. There we go. And um, I'm just going to get this out of the way early on here since we might have a few new people coming in and whatnot. If you like what you see, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Um, take a look at my video library. If you're still on the fence about things, you're going to see at the end of this video, there's going to be a video that pops up here that is going to be made especially for you actually. And you can take a look at that one if you're still on the fence. And if you like it, then you can hit the subscribe button and the like button. And also all of my schedule is up on suspendedfanimation.com as well as Facebook where I have suspended animation up as well. Normally I do this stuff at the end of the video, but since uh, people don't usually watch the ends of the videos anymore, you know, I, I figured I'd run it at the beginning now and do it there and just get all that work out of the way. How about that? So how's everyone doing tonight? Uh, I know everyone's kind of wondering, they're like, oh my God, is he going to doom this series? He... I, I was okay with this series. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't something that I loved and it wasn't something that I disliked. So it was middle of the road for me. My problem uh, mainly with this series was the, um, uh, as, as I was putting it before, it's the uh, almost Monty Python. I know it's Douglas Adams that they, you know, that it's kind of mimicking is a Douglas Adams style, that very British dry um, over observation of things in the face of insurmountable danger and all that stuff, but keeping that dry British wit. And, um, it wasn't selling it to me really. It, the first couple episodes actually felt like, uh, Monty Python, uh, done by people who, you know, kind of missed the point on Monty Python. And so that was kind of where it was for me on some things. So uh, no one expects the Dennis Inquisition. Thanks, Stanley. Um, but it wasn't bad. I mean, there are some things, like I said, the first three episodes, the only thing that made me laugh was David Tennant, you know, as Crowley. Uh, they're watching Noah's Ark being loaded up. And, uh, you know, he's talking <laughs> he's talking to uh, Michael Sheen, uh, <clears throat> which all of a sudden I just forgot his character's name, uh, Aziraphale. And uh, how that God is coming down to uh, basically wipe out everybody with the flood. And uh, he, we see Crowley turn towards, he goes, hey, Shem, Shem, the unicorn's making a break for it. Ah, that's okay. You got another one. That was the only thing that made me laugh in the first three episodes. And, um, you know, that, that wasn't really kind of uh, the greatest thing for me. Uh, I did feel this was two episodes too long. It should have been four episodes. It could have been a two-hour movie and actually done just fine. Maybe a two-hour and 15-minute long movie and done just fine. There were some things that were a little bit long in the tooth that took a while to come around to. And uh, yes, I understand that's part of the story. It's part of the uh, Douglas Adams kind of thing where you over-explain things and you come back to it and repeat it ad nauseum. And uh, that I, I'm not a big Douglas Adams fan. I know I've said this before and I understand that there are a lot of people that are Douglas Adams fans and this is what they're looking for. Uh, but for me, it, it wasn't. I'm, I'm a, mon, a huge Monty Python fan. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I have a book of all the episodes back here someplace. And uh, it, it just wasn't hitting on all cylinders for me. Now, by the fifth episode, uh, you know, things were going good. And uh, there were some things that were actually pretty funny, like when they're explaining about the um, the freeway that circles London and how Crowley had made this so that it would be, a, you know, hell on earth kind of thing for people getting stuck in traffic. And eventually all the hate would, would light it on fire, trapping London. And that's what it does. And I thought that was actually kind of funny. It's just these little things about how demons make uh, things to torture people on earth. That was one of the things I liked. 
uh yeah i understand viking bitch yeah if you love douglas adams you will really love this show and uh it was pratchett channeling douglas adams yeah i know stanley tweedle that it was uh, a good amount of pratchett uh, channeling douglas adams but you know neil gaiman was the one that was writing the script on this one because of course pratchett has passed on and he's the one who's overseeing the show and the other thing i thought was very pretentious that just kind of threw me out of it uh and i'll just mention this it was at the last episode where they have the army base and the soldier reading neil gaiman's book uh, that for some reason i don't know why kind of pissed me off that someone would throw that in there because it being so full of yourself to actually reference yourself in your own material and it was just like wow okay all right all right i i, I get it but uh <clears throat> you didn't have to do that and i don't know if anyone uh caught it but uh tenant's car the uh, rolls royce that he's that he's driving in the license plate that says neat uh nuck is curtain spelled backwards <laughs> Uh, maybe it was explained in the book. I don't know. But yeah, it was uh, one of those things that I, I thought was kind of funny uh, in a weird kind of way. Because I, I kept looking at it. And I'm like, that means something for some reason. Because it keeps showing the license plate. You can still see it and everything like that. And it, of course, never came back around again. Same thing, like the whole thing with uh, um, Aziraphale losing the sword, the flaming sword. Or not losing it, but giving it away. There's a running joke about him. Did you lose your sword? You were requisitioned a sword. And it goes on and on and on until we get to war having the flaming sword at some point in time. You explained everything else with like a little tiny, you know, five minute, uh, you know, voiceover by God as to how this thing happened. Why not do that as well? So that would have been a nice little aside as to how in the hell war got the, uh, the flaming sword. That, that just little things for me, you know, uh, Joker says, uh, oh, you guys are talking about all kinds of other stuff. Yeah. Other than what I'm talking about right now. So you just ignore me. Okay. That's good. <laughs> They're like, I don't care. He doesn't like it. So we're just going to ignore him and talk amongst ourselves. I get it. Yeah. I like the choice for the actors for the horror, uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse as well. Um, Although Morel uh, Enos, who plays War, already was in Hannah as the bad guy in Hannah. So I was kind of like, uh, yeah, you need to get out of the uh, Amazon realm for a little bit and get into some other roles. Uh, I did love Brian Cox voicing Death. <clears throat> Excuse me. I thought that was actually pretty funny. And Pollution instead of uh, Pestilence. Uh, I thought that was actually a, a good addition in there because Pestilence uh, had retired. Yeah or plague uh, had retired. So yeah, uh, and Francis McDormand, yeah, as as God was kind of funny. The whole thing about God uh, doesn't play dice, uh, but it, it is like, what was it? Playing poker in a dark room uh, <laughs> with uh, someone who keeps constantly changing the rules and uh, you never know exactly what it is that's going on. And, and that's what God is supposed to be. That I thought was actually pretty funny. The uh, explanation of how God works. And it's, it's completely random. Because you'll never know. Because it's whatever God wants at that point. Yeah. Uh, did you watch Succession, Dennis, on HBO? I did not. Uh, I, I've seen the commercials for it. I love Brian Cox, quite honestly. He is uh, a great actor. One of my favorite lines is from, um, and now I'm blanking on it, the Gina Davis movie with uh, Samuel Jackson, where she is a hitman that has lost her memory. My God, it's from the 90s. And it actually is the, it's, its premise is actually what happened in 9-11. Yeah, the long kiss goodbye, uh, uh, goodnight. Yeah, long kiss goodnight. That is a great movie and Brian Cox is in it. He plays a CIA guy. And at one point he's sitting at the table uh, with his wife. I want to say she's looks like a lot more elderly than he is. And her little dog, her little Pomeranian is just licking the shit out of its asshole. And he tells her, um, your dog and my appetite are mutually exclusive. And I, I submit that what it's been licking its asshole for three hours and whatever is there is either there to stay or is not going to become dislodged. And 
for some reason, every time I see that and hear that line, especially the way he delivers it, makes me laugh. <laughs> and he just, I mean, he holds his own against Sam Jackson and Gina Davis in that movie, which is a great movie, by the way. So if you haven't seen it, it's a good action movie. Um, Viking bitches, I think, I just think the whole idea of the Antichrist being born but being raised right was silly fun. I also liked Anathema. Yeah, Anathema Device was a good character as well. Uh, so was uh, a Percival. Uh, um, I just blanked on his name. Uh, Newton uh, Pulsifer. Pulsifer. And uh, also, you know, Shadwell as well. You know, the whole uh, Witchfinder group which I thought was funny, had been dwindled down to one person and how he lived in this uh, kind of like a boarding house, if you will, and is always calling the woman across the way who is a running massages, uh, reading, doing seances, things like that. And he keeps calling her the, the Jezebel, the harlot of Babylon, the whore of Babylon and all this kind of stuff. He calls her all kinds of names, but she still brings him tea and dinner and all that kind of stuff. And it's it's pretty funny. And it's also interesting to see Michael McKean doing a, a British accent as well. Considering that he's completely not British. He's an American through and through. and Or Scottish, excuse me. He was doing a Scottish accent. Uh, Scottish. He kept, I don't know, he kept kind of veering a little bit into British and then Scottish. And yeah. So that was actually kind of funny. And, and Crowley. I mean, David Tennant. What can we say about David Tennant? David Tennant is why you're watching this for the most part to see how Crowley is going to be. And I did love the twist at the end. The, the twist at the end was actually really good of them actually switching because of uh, the witches prophecies that uh, tells them, you know, what to do. They actually divine that they should switch roles and you don't know it at the time, but that Crowley has become uh, a Zerophel and a Zerophel has become Crowley. And they both get abducted by, you know, hell and heaven. And, uh, you know, Crowley, of course, is going to get dunked in holy water, which is actually Aziraphale, so nothing happens to him. And Aziraphale is going to get thrown into a flaming tornado, if you will, and nothing happens to him because it's Crowley. So, um, is it more tenants or less tenant? Uh, I like more tenant on that one, to tell you the truth. Uh, he is chewing a lot of scenery, but you know what? Uh, Michael Sheen actually holds his own against him, too, and does does a good job. The, the whole bumbling kind of thing, but at the same time, uh, you know, Crowley says it best. He, you know, they both say it to each other. You wouldn't be able to do what you did if you didn't have a little bit of good in you. And he says, well, yeah, you wouldn't have to be able to do what you did if you didn't have a little bit of bastard in you. And that's actually kind of, you know, a good thing right there. And a little bit more of that kind of play, I think, would have endeared me a little bit more to it. Uh, like I said, there was a lot of kind of um, running gags that went nowhere in this that could have been cut out. And you could have put more of them in it, more of their interaction that I would have liked a lot better. Yeah, so... The acting was great. I really liked the way they showed the friend. Yeah, the friendship was actually good. And then the end... Um, they have, you know, we're, we're basically Crowley calls them out and says, well, you know what the next war is? The next war is going to be between us and them. And the Zerfell says, well, what do you mean? Uh, us against the humans? And yeah, he says heaven and hell, basically the demons and the angels against all of humanity. And that's where you're going for your second season. Cause there is a good omens two book that's out there. So, I mean, Yeah. Everyone keeps telling me, oh, this is a, you know only one and done season. And it's like, no, it's not. This is Amazon. They, they put money into this. They want more seasons out of this. And they will pump more out of it. So. And I mean, the whole Antichrist thing um, didn't really get going until the kid actually started gaining his powers. And then the whole, I mean, they pumped up the Hellhound as well, Dog. And then didn't go anywhere with it. Kind of like they, I think we're starting to run out of money with the CGI stuff. And so they didn't want to go back to dog at all. And so, yeah, there was a couple things that were dropped uh, as you, as you go through story wise. I, I, I'm sorry. I watch so much TV now at this point that I see where lags are and I see where cuts are happening now. 
and it's a sickness quite honestly with me because i'm going oh yeah so you cut this out oh, okay this is where you made some budget decisions here all right this is where you had to flip that for that okay i got it and uh i understand where they're going with it but at the same time you need to if you're not going to commit to the bit don't do it as they say in comedy you know what yeah and john ham oh yeah john ham was awesome uh i did love john ham he was actually really good <laughs> too. the, the kind of clueless angel you know uh and then uh i i can't remember the uh one of the demons the the demon who did not get destroyed by uh, I'm, oh my god i'm blanking on his name all of a sudden i have my imdb up of course as well and uh <clears throat> uh haster there we go so haster not knowing what a computer is uh not knowing what a selfie is doesn't like jokes and he's completely totally this uh stuck in the past kind of person yet he is supposed to be leading the uh, the throngs of hell the armies of hell against heaven and on earth and so he's trying he doesn't know what he's doing quite honestly which is kind of funny uh viking bitch is in the book the hellhound just stayed on dog uh the, the longer he was in that form the more dog he became what they left out was the voiceover for dog's thoughts yeah see that would have been good. And they could have gotten another actor to bring in uh, that just does voiceover work. And that would have been awesome to do dog's voice. Yeah. Yeah, he stayed a dog. Yeah, I, I, I got you on that Viking bitch. Um, that's fine. But again, we just had no motivation. We had God doing a little bit of the voiceover about what's happening with dog. But there was nothing. They kind of built it up. That was the whole thing. And say what you know, even though I don't really like Douglas Adams stuff all that much, even though he would build something up, he actually would pay it off, even though sometimes the payoff would be that, oh, this is really, you know, in, you know, insignificant, really. It was still a payoff on something that he had built up, whereas this, it was just kind of and it just went off. It's kind of like lighting a, a, a firework and you get one of those piccolo peats. And then a gun dies all of a sudden you were waiting for this thing to explode and do all kinds of nasty stuff. It's this gigantic big Roman candle looking motherfucker and you light it and all it does is it whistles for a second then and you get a little bit of smoke and that's what it was for me. Yeah, she's pissed at me. She's in the other room right now because I told her to shut up before the she's she started to hey, move for Uh She was barking and all that kind of stuff. She was playing with her toys. Yeah. Uh, Stanley Twitter says, okay, I'll let this pass as a positive review. Do you get a like? <laughs> Thank you, Stanley. Yeah, like I said, it wasn't bad. There's just parts of it that needed a little cleaning up. And uh, again, I, I'm going to blame Gaiman on this one because uh, we saw, you know, Gaiman, uh, same thing, American Gods. He, uh, interfered a lot from what i understand with american gods and that's the reason why uh and he wasn't working on it that was the whole thing he's uh, he was executive producer he was working on this show uh primarily but he was interfering quite a bit with american gods as it was going on and um from what i am understanding about what was happening behind the scenes and yeah i can understand why the showrunner left or was booted, I should say. Uh, hey, Pen Farm Girl. Dennis is trying to be Switzerland on this one. I'm not trying to be Switzerland on this one. I would tell you if it sucked. You know me. I wouldn't have even done this uh, video if I thought it sucked. It's a middle of the road video for a, a middle of the road show for me. I mean, it's not something I'm going to go back to. It's not something that uh, I hold in high esteem. It's just kind of a middle of the road for me. It took me a while to get through it. I really did. It took me a long time to get through it. Uh, like I said, I fell asleep at the end of episode three and into uh, episode four, the beginning of episode four. So I actually had to go back and watch that part of it because uh, that was where the lag starts. Is that episode three, about middle of episode three is where the lag starts. 
into a good portion episode four and that's you know and, and almost till the end of episode four and then five picks back up again it did take me some naps to get through it maybe for nobby that and some you know butt chugging i was taking some of the uh, wb executives advice on that one and it works quite honestly it makes you pretty hyper yeah so uh vb do you have a favorite line that got left out of the book is what pen farm girl is asking uh my image says i plan on rewatching when i get time but now there's legion to rewatch yeah i need to rewatch legion as well i tried to last night but i was so burned out so tired that uh, as soon as i hit the recliner and i started watching i was i was out and i was like yeah that's not gonna happen i've got to go back and watch it again yes joe greer uh yes it is bad news about deadly class i will be talking about that on saturday hellboy jones good omens in my fan fiction hey mr roboto yeah that's i can see that uh moving away vb fills in a lot of blanks in her head she has a creative imagination you're just saying that because uh never mind uh viking bitch says no i just wish there had been uh more of the nuns they remind me of the ninjas from the tick comics yeah i mean there would have been a nice little thing again these whole things where they're popping up um, like the one nun who now has is uh, running out of the uh, the old nunnery, excuse me, the old hospital, uh, a retreat for executives where they can do paintball wars and all that kind of stuff. It would have been a nice to have a little three minute voiceover by God as to what the hell happened there. You know, do a little trip through time as to uh, how she set that up. And that was, you know, that's a Douglas Adams thing again is having that little uh i actually what happened there you know set it up do it really quickly doesn't need to be take much time clueless like castiel sometimes slurmy scott says i never read the book and it took me three episodes to really get into it but then i really like the show yeah see i have the book i started to read it and i stopped I'm not a fan also of Neil Gaiman's writing. Neil Gaiman's writing for some reason just rubs me wrong. And I could tell which parts are which. And I'm pretty sure I don't like Pratchett's writing either. So, sorry. Yeah, I've read a lot of books too. So that's the other thing too that uh, I, I am very particular about my taste. I understand that. I'm a picky, fickle bitch. That's all I can say. Uh, Mufinobi says, I agree, Dennis, uh, that would have been good. A few more narrator beats. Exactly. Just a few more narrator beats. It didn't need to t take all that long, quite honestly. And it would have taken up that dead space between uh, the middle of episode three to almost the end of episode four. Yeah. And that was, that's where my, my whole dilemma on this thing came from. Uh, Viking says, remember Dennis says that bitch is gender. It is gender neutral. Bitch is gender neutral. You can use bitch as a uh, adjective and a noun. That's is true. Because <clears throat> you can bitch about things and you can also be a bitch at the same time. That bitch really bitches about things. See? Actually, that's a verb. I take that back. Uh, a verb and a, and a noun. <laughs> uh, Slurvy Scott says, wow, times have changed. I remember when calling a girl a bitch as a compliment and she was so insulted. Yeah, that does happen. Don't even try it at work. Get your HR involved and all that kind of stuff. You really don't want that. <clears throat> Stanley Tweedle says, sorry, for, uh, Viking bitch, foreign language fascination with English wordplay. Yeah, Stanley Tweedle, English is really the worst language, quite honestly. It is so fucking weird. And uh, it is the hardest language to, uh, from what I understand, it is the hardest language to learn because of all the different idiosyncrasies that happen. Not only that, you have all the slang that happens and... Yeah, it, it's just a weird fucking language. That's all it is. Uh, Pen Farm Girl, when we first see Death, he's playing a trivia video game. Uh, the question comes up, what year did Elvis die? 
he says i never touched him uh they had him at the machine in the show but left out that line oh okay Oh, Pepper's being a little bitchy every day, Viking bitch. She really is. Uh, just today, she's upset because, uh, you know, I'm trying to wean her off of the uh, treats. I didn't see anything. And because uh, she's supposed to be eating her food after everything that she went through on Saturday. And she's been not eating her food. So I've been burying stuff in the food in order for her to dig it out. And what she's been doing, she's been digging out the stuff that I've been putting in the food and I'm just leaving the food being a little brat that she is. So now I'm thinking she's uh, cut off from those completely now at this point. Pop and soda. Uh, yeah. Don't even start on the pop and soda thing. That's regional shit. Joker that that's when it gets, uh, yeah. Oh, tell me about it. Viking Mitch. Uh, I'll give you the story of what happened to her this weekend uh, since we're here. So I go to pick her up on Saturday. She got dental cleaning done and I'll, I'll give you the full Megillah here. She also, uh, little dogs have anal glands that need to be expressed and it's the most fouling, foul smelling thing you'll ever smell in your life. Well, she had a little bacterial infection, so they had to go in. They figured while she was out because they normally knock dogs out when they do their teeth cleaning to, hose out the anal glands with a uh, to get rid of the bacterial infection. Basically, they put a solution in. They have to really get in there and kind of hose it out, if you will. Um, so <clears throat> they shave a little spot on her front leg, her front leg, and uh, they inject her with uh, something to make her drowsy so they can put the catheter in uh, in her arm so that, you know, they can do the anesthesia and all that stuff. So the nurse, when I pick her up, says, you're going to notice that she has shave spots on both legs, on both front legs. What happened was, is we gave her the shot. We thought that she was actually kind of out. We went to go put the catheter in, but she was faking it and came up. And <laughs> so we had to shave the other side to put the catheter in the other side to knock her out. So, yeah, she actually pretended to be asleep so that they wouldn't put the catheter in. That's what kind of dog I'm dealing with. Yes, there are uh, little vein catheters in their in their arms. Yeah. That's the first time I have ever heard. And I think the nurse said that's the first time she's ever seen a dog faking being out. <laughs> I don't know where the hell she learned that because she doesn't do that here at home. Uh, yeah. So there's your story for the day. And yeah, she's pretty pissed at me, you know, because of that whole incident of going in and getting both ends done. I mean, literally all Saturday night, it was, uh, 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 she was doing that to me. I'm like, what do you want? And then she just looked at me uh, and I'm like, all right, whatever. Keep moaning, whatever you're doing. Oh yeah. Yeah. A couple of times Morks. She's got me back quite a few times. So yeah, she likes what she does is she will, if I'm sitting on the recliner as well, she will jump up on my chest and will uh, push pressure points uh, else, you know, on my neck here and try and cut off blood flow, blood flow to my neck and yeah, to my head. She knows exactly where to step and she's only 17 pounds and she knows precisely how much pressure to put on and how to make it hurt. Yes. <clears throat> a slurmy scott says bu pretends to be asleep all the time also deaf he even fake snores wow interesting yeah she's like a little freaking uh that, that's the other thing too is I, I walk her on a harness she's got a harness on and when she stops stands there and i go to pull her she won't move it's like a little anchor i call her my little anchor because that's what she is and then I tell her, I'm going to pick you up if you don't move. And then she's like, <sighs> and she starts moving because she hates being picked up. She figures that when she gets picked up, it emasculates her in some way. <laughs> Even though there's nobody there for her to, you know, to see it. It's one of the funniest damn things. I don't know what it is, but. Uh... Oh, I know move for nobody that she can take me out while, while I'm sleeping, but she doesn't have a posable thumb, so she can't get to the doors to open them up to get out. 
So, yeah. She's a special one, let's just say. Yeah, she's a very special, special dog. Oh, it's just not the uh, Vulcan um, neck pinch. It's not the Pepper Vulcan pinch uh, move for Novi. Yeah, she can actually take out different body parts uh, by standing on different nerves and blood vessels and things like that. And yeah. Does a Snyder cut exist? Supposedly not, according to Snyder, but who knows? He probably has been working on something in his garage. <clears throat> Yes, she is a cat trapped in a dog's body. There are pictures of her um, laying on the top of a couch, like on the you know the back end of the couch, just kind of laying across. She does that. <clears throat> you mean like the dash hound in Good Omens who won't let his owner pick him up? No, no, no. She will let me pick her up. She has no choice in the matter. But uh, she's just pissed that I pick her up because uh, she figures that it's, you know, uh, something that babies get, yeah, you know, it gets done to babies and unruly dogs. Yeah. Oh, I'm fairly sure she's an alien as well. Oh, she's not an acupuncturist. She knows where all the, you know, she knows where the, the, the touch of death is. If you've ever seen the Shaw brothers movies, uh, you know, the old uh, martial arts movies from the seventies, she knows what the touch of death is. <clears throat> Kill Bill. Now, Kill Bill stole it from Touch of Death. I know all the freaking movies that uh, Quentin Tarantino has uh, borrowed from or done homages to, i.e. steal and make them into his own movies. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> we have genius people, why not dogs? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway... <laughs> <laughs> I digress. I veered off into pepper territory there. So yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't my cup of tea on this one. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It just was there for me. Uh, there were some things that were kind of funny. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, and then the whole thing with Satan coming up to, you know, uh, he's going to give a talking to to Adam. And you kind of saw where it was coming that, you know, Adam had that power to basically make, he was too powerful at that point. All Anything that he said would happen. So all he had to say was, you're not my real father. You're not my dad. And of course, you know, Satan does not become his dad at that point. But he still is technically the Antichrist because it all does. Yeah, so it, it's... It's a little waving of the hand and yeah. And as you know, they used to say timey wimey. Movie Fenobi, I had a little dog named Scooby back in the day. No wait, TV dog. Uh-huh. Yeah. Dog and owner are often alike. No, I don't try and kill people. At least not that you know of. The drunk monk. The five deadly venoms. Thank you, Joe Greer. Yeah, I'm so pissed I don't get the El Rey network. The El Rey network is awesome for having, uh, uh, was it Friday nights? They have the martial arts stuff. The martial arts stuff was awesome. They used to show all the old Shaw Brother movies and some good stuff, man. Some really good stuff. I had a lot of, uh, I remember as a kid back in the San Francisco Bay Area, they used to have uh, Channel 26, which would do uh, Saturday Kung Fu Theater. Awesome stuff. And we get all the old Shaw Brothers movies, Golden Harvest, all of that. Uh, I, we also used to get the old Ultraman serials, Flash Gordon serials, all that stuff on TV. Yeah. That was the guy who did Creature Features. Uh, he used to run a children's show during the day on weekdays. He used to play Captain Cosmos or Captain Cosmic. Captain Cosmic, that's what it was. Yeah. As I tripped down a memory lane there. It was channel 56 and 22 that did that in the LA area. Yeah. Ejar. I heard about those too. Yeah. I know there was one down here in San Diego too. that used to do it as well. Hey, Ejar. Yeah. You just came in at the tail end of all this, but uh, yeah. So if you're still on the fence about joining up, take a look up here. There's going to be a video up in this area and it's going to be picked 
especially for you based on all the nasty, nasty videos you've been watching on YouTube because YouTube knows what you've been watching. And they're going to match one of my videos out of all that filth you've been watching. And they're going to pluck it out of my video library and pop it up there. And if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Yeah. And tomorrow I'm going to be doing Krypton. Thursday is going to be iZombie. Friday is the now canceled Swamp Thing. Swampy, we hardly miss you. And um, Saturday is Saturday Morning Blast Off, where I take the genre news of the week, talk about that, and any genre stuff you guys want to talk about. And, of course, Monday is the fantastic and final season of Legion, which is based on Marvel Comics. Yes, it is uh, an X-Men or a mutant title, if you will. And it's really, really good. Ah, uh, yes, exactly, Viking Bitch. If you like Legion, come on back every Monday and also come back Saturdays for Saturday Morning Blast Off or SBO, as we call it. I just found out Lobo was in the Constantine series. Oh, the guy who played Logo? Lobo was in the uh, Logo. <laughs> I call him Lo you know, Tiny Lobo, but yeah, Logo is actually kind of appropriate too. He was in the Constantine series. Oh, that's right. I, I've seen his face before. He is. I forgot about that. I forgot he was in that. Yeah. Yes, Pen Farm Girl, I'm, I'm aware of that rumor as well. I actually posted something, and it's really stupid. I'm going to be talking about that on Saturday as well. Um, it's not cool what they're doing. Uh, again, I'm fairly sure they just have 24 hour a day, you know, hoses stuffed up their asses and just an endless supply of coke getting blown up them because that's the only way they've been making decisions like this. That's the only way they can get uh, decisions like that. I saw that rumor on Dennis's social media presence. Exactly. They are butt chugging big time. Tiny Lobo, I think, is in shape, but that gray makeup makes him look like he has a beer gut. You think, uh, Viking bitch? He looks to me, I mean, there's a couple of shots, especially. Uh, if you take a look at that one that I posted in episode two, where he's standing there and you get him off to the side. And yeah, he's got a little bit of a beer gut going. I don't think that's uh, makeup. I think that's just the beer gut. He's trying to suck it in, but uh, he's six feet tall, really? Because he looks like he's 5'3". Because they always shoot him from below as well. <sighs> if you can believe his bio. Oh, come on, Pen Farm Girl. You know, guys, we always lie about what size everything is. You know that. You've been around the block before. You know this. What do you call a guy with big hands and big feet? Or what, do you, you know, you know what they say about a guy with big hands and big feet. I just screwed that whole joke up. There we go. He's got big gloves and big shoes. God, damn, it's, it's, it's been a long day. That's why women can't judge distance. <laughs> That's a good one, Pen Farm Girl. <laughs> Centimeters, Mr. Roboto. Um, Stanley Tweedle says that tax money thing with Swamp Thing was weird. Yeah, that that whole thing. There, there was a lot of shenanigans going on with that DC Swamp Thing, uh, DC Universe Swamp Thing cancellation. It, there really was. So someone, I think, got a house payment or at least you know a house out of it, and maybe a car and things like that. There, there was some money that went missing someplace. That's all I'm going to say. Maybe it just went up somebody's ass. Who knows? No, that's okay, Mr. Roboto. You can keep that zipped up. I, I'm okay with that. Um, now you guys are talking about Farscape? What the hell is far Farscape? Uh, Slurmy Scott says, I can personally refute the hands and feet. <laughs> Oh, okay. Now it's devolved into all kinds of stuff. So, <laughs> fart skate. 
Oh, e jar. You 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 got some fighting words there with a wrench. So that's uh, uh that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, I know, I know. I, I've talked to everything about except for game good omens. I'm sorry about that. It's uh, like I said, there was only so much to talk about on that. You know, once you got done with it. Oh come on! Wow, Mikey, bitch, you actually took that one out. That was actually funny. Come on, that was a funny one. I'm okay with fartscape. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just gonna go back in later and, and remove that one, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow. So with that said, uh, <laughs> uh, take a look at the web page, uh, <laughs> suspendedfanimation.com. That's where my schedule is up. I change it every week. Uh, it's also up on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram. Instagram is going to be blowing up once uh, Comic-Con rolls around. I'm going to be posting more and more pictures. And uh, I also have a Patreon page as well. And that's going to be changing a little bit here when I get the t-shirt ideas out. I still need to sit down and actually make those t-shirts uh, happen. You know, the designs and all that stuff. I have them up here right now. They just need to go out onto the computer at the moment. So when I have whatever free time, I can cobble out of that pocket universe that I'm currently trying to make. Because that's the other thing I'm working on, too, is getting that pocket uh, universe built so I can manufacture some more time for myself. So... With that said, thank you, everybody in the chat. Uh, no, she's the one that's actually cracking the whip there, Slurmy. What are you talking about? I work for her, so she has nice things. I never get any of the nice things. She sleeps on a big bed. I sleep on the floor. So, uh, Pen Farm Girl says, Slurmy, based on your study. Uh, no, God, no. I'm not going to even go there. Just as long as it's a pocket universe. Yeah, it's just a small thing. It's only a couple of hectare, a couple of million hectic. Hec, 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 I can't even speak anymore. Never mind. It, I'm not even going to attempt any more jokes because obviously I'm just fucking them up tonight, quite honestly. So with that said, uh, take a look at the videos. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. <laughs> I will see you guys tomorrow for Krypton. Until then, don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. Otherwise, you may have some asshole on YouTube just saying, oh, what the fuck? Why did you make this show? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Because, you know, armchair quarterbacking is so much easier to do than actually making the damn series yourself. Thanks, everybody. Good night. <laughs>